Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and do you want a fun trivia fact? You want to know how to make any Unity developer swear? Go up and ask them about networking. Do it. Just go and see how they react to it, because networking in Unity has always been a bit of a beep show. So what they had originally, they had a technology called UNet. UNet was the basic built-in networking technology there, and it consisted of two parts. We'll get to those two parts in just a second, but the problem with UNet is it wasn't really that scalable, it wasn't really that secure, and all of those things are pretty important in the world of networking. So people have been using third-party networking for ages with Unity, and Unity out of the box has needed a better solution. Now what you're going to notice is right now I am on the uh, UNet page for multiplayer and networking and you're going to see that UNet is deprecated. Now deprecated means not necessarily removed but not going to get additional support and it is going to be removed at some point in the future so that means you shouldn't be starting a project using UNet. Now UNet was built out of two pieces and these are going to be relevant to later on in this conversation. The first part was the LL API. Now the LL API stands for low level API. And this is kind of closer to the, the network stack, closer to your network card. And it deals with really low level networking in Unity, things like opening and handling ports, writing data over the network and so on. So if you're going to build your own networking solution, there's a good chance you might build it on top of the LL API. Now, if the idea of building your own networking stack kind of sucked, what you're gonna probably do is instead use the high level API or HHL API. Uh, I think I might have made up that out. No, HL API, sorry, bad acronym there. And you can see the HL API is built over top of the low level API, but it gives you things like messaging, serialization, connection management, object state, actions, object lifecycle, uh, game control, player control, and engine integration. So all of the stuff beyond just sending data between two, two machines, that's what the high level API took care of. Problem is, as we mentioned off the hop, they are both deprecated. And the funny thing is, they have been deprecated for a very long time. So today is closing in on the last couple of weeks of 2020. So we're moving into 2021. And this post was from August the 2nd, 2018. So in August of 2018, they got rid of their networking solution. UNet was deprecated and targeted for killing it off. Their justification was, through our Connected Games initiative, we are revamping how we make networking games easier, more performant, and multiplayer ready by default. To make these important changes, we decided to start anew. That means existing multiplayer features will be gradually deprecated with more performance, scalable, and secure technologies taking their place. But don't worry, Games Impacted will have plenty of time. So we're going on two years now, and uh, yeah, well, one of the problems with migrating, so we'll go into this next paragraph first, because this was an update. So as promised, we've been following your feedback closely, and I think most of that feedback consists of beep and beep and mother beep and other beeps. Uh, but as promised, we have been following your feedback closely while building our new connective game solution. We've uh, decided to extend the uh, UNet LL API critical support. So that means they're going to continue to, you know, fix bugs and security problems and such in it uh, for an additional year uh, after the original plan to provide more transition time for developers. We've recently also updated our UNet deprecation facts to address the concerns we have seen the most feedback time, like transition timing. Now, the problem with transition and migration is in order to have a point B, and migrate to point B from point A to point B, which is what a transitional migration is all about, well, you need to have a point B. And uh, that, that, that's where a lot of the swearing comes from. So the thing is, the way that Unity were going to solve networking is the way they were going to solve everything. It was called DOTS. Now, DOTS stands for Data Oriented Technology Stack, and DOTS has been a dumpster fire. That's not to say that it's a bad thing. It just hasn't been the smoothest migration. What they're basically trying to do is rewrite Unity in place. So we're going to be moving eventually away from the game object slash mono behavior way of doing things to a much more multi-core, multi-processor, distributed networking friendly solutions. And this is built up of a number of different pieces. Things like a subset of C-sharp for the maximum 
performance, the burst compiler for you know making the uh, most compiled, uh, most most performant code possible. The C plus job system for mass parallelity. Uh, we've got a new physics system, which I think just kind of came online the other uh, couple of releases ago. DSP graph animation, and of course the dots runtime. But the key thing in all of this is the netcode component. So dependent on the dots updates, they're going to build their new netcode, the replacement for UNet on top of dots. Now the problem is dots ain't here yet. So netcode ain't here yet. Well, that's misleading. They both exist in uh, development versions. So nothing here ready to be used at the production level. So what that kind of did is it left Unity developers in the last two years hanging in the wind. And let's just say a lot of things were waiting on dots. This is not unique to networking. We, we've kind of um, had a bit of a walk back recently when they purchased Bolt because they have a new visual scripting solution in the works, but, um, and it's actually, I believe built on top of the, oh no, that's the audio stuff. Uh, but they do have this new uh, visual scripting solution in the works for dots uh, that is uh, delayed. Yeah, because dots is, uh, well, delayed, basically. So what they did is they bought Bolt. Now, Bolt is a visual scripting solution for game objects-based development. And this is all relevant to today because of this announcement. Accelerating, <laughs> that's an interesting choice when you're two years late, uh, Unity's new game object multiplayer networking framework. And of course, what is it called? So we have HL API, LL API, and now we have ML. API. Can you guess what ML stands for? Yeah, it's mid-level. Uh, so what they basically did is they've adopted the open source ML API project as sort of the official first party game objects multiplayer networking solution. So if you are looking for a networking solution, uh, the new official supported mechanism from Unity is what was previously an open source project uh, called ML API. Now I did say earlier that a lot of people, but you, you've all been kind of left in the lurch if you're a Unity developer with a networking solution. So you've had to go and find one of these third party solutions to this point in time. And what they've basically just done is adopted one and they're throwing their own particular resources behind it. So what we are seeing really is um, they're, they're backporting to support game object technology more so, uh, that they're going to be including these things uh, longer. We're going to be living with game objects longer than they ever planned and now they're kind of filling in the gaps. Uh, the, the main developer of this, uh, uh, Elbin Corin, uh, he is now joining the Unity family. Uh, what this actually means in the short term is their brand new team of architects have already joined the Discord over there uh, to, to provide guidance. Over the next few days, we will move the ML API repository into the GitHub uh, for Unity. Uh, there will be no changes to the project license, which is MIT, and the MIT license is really straightforward and flexible and um, good. Uh, code base will evolve over the coming months. We'll encourage you to evaluate the ML API as it exists. Please keep in mind that to ensure future scalability and extensibility in the core systems, we need to introduce breaking changes. <laughs> so the people that got away from uh, Unity's networking and, and chose to use ML API, well, their code's about to break. But that, that should be a short-term thing. Uh, we'll make them worthwhile and be here to help you with the migration. And we will continue to support an extraction layer for many transports to um, interface with. And we will continue to maintain the LL API and Unity Transport Package integration with this mid-layer solution. So LL API didn't quite get so deprecated after all, although HL API is still dodo dead. So something to be aware of. Uh, take a deep look at ML API's architecture. We want to evolve a few key areas before we start building new features on top of the framework. Some of the areas of focus include RPC or remote procedural calls, uh, has two RPC system, convenient RPCs and performance RPCs. Convenience RPCs incurs a performance overhead that uh, performance RPCs addresses. They are not straightforward to use. We are investigating an option to replace them both with a system that is both you know, good performance and easy to use and has clean usage patterns. Uh, snapshot generation, uh, so the current design poses challenges for incorporating features like delta compression or client-side prediction to overcome this roadblock. We are working on separating uh, snapshot generation from packet sending systems and network our relevance model. Sending the right data to each player enables developers to minimize their bandwidth costs and maximize player gameplay experiences will change ML API so new, new, so new methods can be used to increase performance, lower the likelihood of cheating, and lower operating costs by lowering the amount of data sent. 
So if you are interested, ML API is available at mlapi.network. Uh, I got some documentation and the details that are there. It is of course also an open source project. As I mentioned briefly, it is under the MIT license. And yeah, uh, so do be aware that if you are currently using ML API in any way, shape or form, uh, there is going to be some breakages going forward. Here you can see an example of uh, networking using ML API. Now, one thing I did kind of find funny is that this one, it says the Unity ML API or mid-level API is a framework. It offers low level and high level abstractions. So, okay. So that's, it's a framework, the M mid-level API. Well, if we go back here to the ML API, the ML API is a high level networking library. <laughs> Uh, so now just something I, I thought was kind of funny as I was reading through this stuff, by the way, if this whole idea is making you just kind of not want to work with any of this stuff, there are alternatives, probably the punnest alternative, uh, out there, probably the thing that is most used, uh, is photon, uh, unfortunately photon free download, but not free to use. But if you are looking for alternatives, there are a lot of people out there using, uh, photon unity packages. There are two versions out there. There is a free version. Um, and then there is a um, plus version. Uh, this one allows a hundred current user plan. So it, you're kind of gonna run into problems with, with the pricing on this one as you kind of scale things up. So it's free to develop with, but if you have any actual networking going on, uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna scale up as you have more people. So I think it's, yeah, free as tw uh, 20 concurrent users and 60 gigabytes of traffic. Whereas you, then you start getting into tiers up to six terabytes and 2000 users. And then you kind of call us <laughs> that's when we get into here. So if you've got uh, up to 50,000 concurrent users, there's uh, special pricing and then there's enterprise pricing and so on. So if you are looking for an alternative to UNet, which is dead, uh, LL API, which is on life support, and ML API, which is the new officially adopted Unity uh, networking solution for game objects, you're going to probably want to check out Photon or give me recommendations uh, in in the uh, comments down below, because quite frankly, uh, Unity people have been dealing with this for a while, uh, and this is nothing new. Uh, but it, it is nice to see that Unity uh, acknowledges that game objects are going to be here for a while and are supporting them in, in any way, shape, or form. It's interesting that they chose to adopt an open source project, but again, makes a lot of sense, frankly, especially with the creator joining on board. Uh, if it works, uh, why you know why reinvent the wheel? So that is where we ended up with the ML API, uh, which you gotta know was renamed because of the HL API and the LL API. But um, uh, yeah, I, and I suppose the N API would be a kind of offensive uh, choice of acronym. So that's where we stand here, the ML API. Uh, of course, if you are, um, you know, going about things in terms of the future of, you know, the designed future or the planned future or the best performing future, uh, the future is still going to be Unity Netcode for dots. Uh, it's just when that future is going to arrive in production ready form, nobody knows. Uh, so that is it. Uh, the um, new official game objects based networking solution is the ML API open source project. Let me know what you think of Unity Network in general and this change. Are you happy to see them continuing to support the game object workflow? And what do you use personally for networking in Unity? Let me know these things, comments down below, and I'll talk to you all later.